With all new toys, the first thing I like to do is run them into things and throw them on the ground. The result of that little crash was this broken plate. It's made out of kind of powdered metal casting. The piece where the gimbal actually screws on is only a few mil wide where it actually connects to the plate, so it broke there. It sits on this little plastic piece with these rubber bands. I made some measurements and I had these pieces of aluminum cut. It's 18 gauge aluminum. Ended up bending it because uh, their casting is kind of a bent with a few 45s on there. I just had the people that I had cut it, they just cut it and then I drilled the holes manually and bent it manually. These reproductions ended up being really close to the same size, but a good amount heavier duty, so hopefully I won't run into the same point of failure. The original casting weighs pretty much nothing, but these weigh about two grams. In order to get the Mavic apart, you want to start off by taking these plates off. Everything is either a 1.5 mil hex bolt or small Phillips. Under each plate, once they're off, there's two bolts holding the top plate on. On the top side, there's six more bolts, four underneath the battery compartment, and then two to the rear of the battery compartment. You can see that the back is kind of loose now. The GPS board is part of the top plate, so if you pry it open, you can see the white connector there. You want to use some tweezers or something, maybe a screwdriver, to undo that connection. The front of the top plate has a snap fit design, so you have to carefully pry it off. Here's what it looks like with the top plate removed. Now that the top plate's removed, we're going to take off the magnetic compass, and it looks like there's a black and white JST connector, maybe power supply or something. There are four flat flex connectors that need to be taken off the gimbal board. They're connected with some type of RVT silicone, so you have to cut that. Once the wires are loose, there's four screws holding the gimbal on. Now the gimbal assembly will just slide out. So here's the whole gimbal assembly off, and there's one more piece of flat flex connector we have to undo. With the connector loose, I'm going to unscrew the board from the plastic rubber band holder. There's a metal clip holding the gimbal, so I'm going to also unscrew that. Now using some tweezers to spread the rubber bands, we'll remove the gimbal from the plastic piece. Next, I took off this little side plate so that I could have a little bit more slack to the gimbal board. There's two screws holding the gimbal arm to the metal plate. The flat flex connector runs through a hole in the metal plate. That pretty much sums up the disassembly. Reassembly is in the reverse order. I'm not going to comment on it. Here's a link to testing and the first flight after reassembly.
After getting everything back together, I went ahead and made sure there was plenty of clearance. Here's the initial power up. You can see that the gimbal seems just fine in its initial checks. The rest of the pre-flight checks were fine other than a bad signal. Went ahead and checked the gimbal motion with the lever there and then did a calibration of the gimbal itself. So after all those checks seem okay, I went ahead and did an indoor flight. Everything was fine. Except for the video was out of focus. It was blowing out about 20 miles an hour outside, so I decided not to fly until the next day. And just to end this, here is the first drone after the repair. I did have a few spare replacement plates cut, so if anyone's interested, I could put them on eBay or something like that.